Hey, good evening, everyone. I hope you all are doing well. So today I am doing something kind of different that was requested by um, one of my Jonesies. Her name is Stasha Casanova, and she requested that I read a story from one of my books that I've been reading. Um, it's called Wrong Roads, and it's scary stories from coast to coast. Now, what this book is, is a book of short stories, you know, from coast to coast. Um, so I'm starting with Kansas. And this, this story is called, I'll Never Go Back to Stanton County by Nick Boddick. Bear with me. This is my, <laughs> I get nervous doing these kind of things, so just bear with me. I'll Never Go Back to Stanton County. I was helping a friend move from Wisconsin to Texas a few summers back. I was driving one car full of stuff, and he and our other friends were driving another car for this particular leg of the trip. At one point, we stopped off for of food and took a nap. Once we were back on the road, my friend insisted that we go on some, some random road. It's a side road instead of the main highway. I knew he was wrong, but he was stubborn, so I agreed. This particular night, we were going to start driving since it was already 4 a.m. and we just had napped. We were, about, we were about 70 miles in on this new route by my friend who decided on this. And we were in Stanton County, Kansas. I had my windows down and I kept feeling like I was hearing something over the music that I was playing. I turned it down, wondering if it was some noise coming from my friend's car in front of me. With, mu with the music now off, I listened intently out the window. The road was a two-lane road, so I would be able to see anyone coming towards us and would surely see anyone coming up from behind which was unlikely as we were going about 90 miles per hour unless their lights were off they were doing 110 i would have seen them a few seconds into listening out the window i heard laughing it wasn't one person it was like a group of children this laughter got louder and louder and louder as though it was approaching me until it sounded like it was right outside my window. At that moment, the laughing stopped, and of course, the car started sputtering. I frantically searched for the walkie-talkie. I had to communicate with the other car. Luckily, I got connected to them, and it turned out their car was stalled too. They were about 40 yards ahead of me. By the time I stopped, I stayed in the car, unable to roll the windows up due to the electricity in the car not functioning. I was silently praying to whatever God there was to not die that night. My friends were freaked out by something too, but weren't able to tell me what spooked them. They told me to come to their car, but I was alone and they were stronger in a pair in case something had happened. They began walking towards me, and about 10 seconds later, I heard a single child's laugh coming from directly across the street in the woods. At that moment, the car started getting unbearably hot. It must have been over 100 degrees in that car by the time I decided I couldn't take it. Even with the cool Kansas country air outside, it was like I was sitting in an oven. I got out sweating. The laughter grew louder, not like it was closer, but like the child was laughing even harder now. Soon after, soon after, another laugh joined. Then another. Before I realized what was going on, I noticed my friends weren't any closer. I radioed them and they said they were going to work on their car, then drive back to me. And to just wait in the car, I frantically asked them if they were hearing what I was hearing and they said they weren't. Even when I held the walkie-talkie up to the direction the laughter was coming from, in almost an instant, a thin fog swept over the road. The laughter was now a group once again. Only there was another tone, a sinister tone, a horrifying laugh, one meant to scare somebody. I said, fuck it. <laughs> I'm out of here and began sprinting to my friends. I was about five yards in, went from the right, the opposite side of where the laughter was coming from. 
I distinctly heard a voice say, nope. And before I knew it, I tripped over a piece of metal pipe that I know wasn't there before I tripped over it. I fell flat on my face and rolled over. I attempted to get back up, but it was like the fog was weighing down on me. I could hardly lift my hands. There was a very tall grass area to my left. I hadn't noticed it until now, but there was no wind, not even a slight breeze, but the tall grass began moving. The laughter was now coming from that side, but it wasn't the full laughter yet. It started as a small child's chuckle. I couldn't even move. I tried screaming, but nothing came out. I could feel my eyes. I could feel eyes on me, excuse me, and I could see whatever was in the grass moving as though it was coming close to me. The laughter was gradually growing from a giggle into a full hysterical laugh. I somehow knew this was it. My life is over. The other instances were to scare me, but this was the actual threat now. I saw the grass begin to part and in the darkness I saw a pair of bright green eyeballs. They had no eyelids. It just stared at me directly into my eyes. As the laughter grew louder and louder, the last thing I saw was four sets of eyes appear out of nowhere in the darkness and then everything went black. When I came to, I was being loaded into an ambulance. I had third degree burns in the form of a handprint on my left wrist and scratches on the backs of both of my arms. Oh my God. As if I've been dragged across the gravel on the side of the road. My friends told me that they that they got to the car about three minutes after we had last spoken on the walkie-talkies and drove back to my car. They couldn't find me. And after searching the areas between the cars and the yelling out for me for about 15 minutes, they drove back towards where we just come from until they got a cell signal and called 911. It took police nearly an hour to get them and then another 40 minutes for them to get back to me. Apparently, when they returned, I was next to my car and my car was running and I was laid out like I was in a casket. I have no memory of what happened after I blacked out and I'm not sure I ever want to remember. That was the single scariest thing that has ever happened to me. Wow, <laughs> that is crazy. See, stuff like that, if you are helping your friends and y'all moving, you know, from one place to another, from one state to the next, and they want to take these off roads, you have to stand your ground and say no. Because sometimes those back streets, those back roads, man, let me tell you, your mind play tricks on you, okay? So... Just like with him, he saw the he saw those green eyeballs that had no eyelids. He heard children laughing. He tried to run. It said nope. It tripped him. He was laid out. He came to, and guess what? He don't remember. Maybe it's best that he don't remember because that right there was crazy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this story. Stasha, I hope you enjoyed it as well. If you'd like for me to do more of these kind of stories, let me know in the comment section. And I will try to do them whenever you know, whenever I can, um, whenever I have a little bit of quiet time. If you heard noise today in the background, it's to be expected. My boys are home. They're in the kitchen. They want to eat stuff. <laughs> so thank you guys for listening. And I will catch you on the next one. Bye.